Hello, welcome back everyone. Hopefully you guys' weekends went well. So Bengals, as we know, seasons, you know, coming to a conclusion here and it is mock draft season in Bengals country. And one of the most common scenarios I've seen people laying out is the Bengals trading back in the draft and then they use that pick to either snag a wide receiver or the top tight end off the board. I like the idea of trading back, I do. I think, that, you know, when you look at the Bengals, you take the third spot, you know, even if you move back to sixth or seventh, the guard position is the biggest need here. It'd be great to get the top offensive lineman off the board as well. I'm not against it, but I can see a scenario where, hey, the Bengals straight back three, four spots. I'd really like to see them get the first or second pick and trade back with the Jets and Jags are just not having any of it. But if you could trade back a couple spots there, maybe pick up an extra second, that can really help this team from a perspective where you can add an additional defensive player or even maybe take another waiver on another offensive lineman in the second round of the draft here so i ain't against that idea there they can get a good return in it but i do not like the idea at all of getting a skill position in the first round and here's why first of all here's a list of tight ends taken in the first round since 2010 jermaine gresham tyler eifer eric ebron oj howard evan ingram hayden hurst Noah fan david and joku now there's a lot of solid tight ends on that list just about all of them really what i don't see there though is any elite tight ends the Travis Kelsey's of the world, taken in the third round. The Gronks, taken in the second. Uh, Kittle, fifth. Ertz, second. Interestingly enough, Ertz was the second off the board behind Tyler Eifert, the one season of Bengals took him. Could the Bengals use a tight end? Sure. Then again, we haven't really seen what you know Uzama, Uzama can do with Joe back there at quarterback. And my basic rule of thumb here is this. If you're picking top 10, top 15, you need to be going after a guy with a high probability of being elite. And facts are facts. At the tight end position, it's a tougher spot to scout in college. Understandably so. A lot of teams don't use them as much or ask them to do as much in college. And I don't want to say the Bengals scouting department's done a terrible job of going scouting tight ends because, you know, Eifert should have probably been a pretty solid tight end if he would have stayed healthy. He just didn't and they didn't utilize him a lot. They're going to go down that route. In fact, the matter is he's healthy now and he's not really carving up the league either, though. So say what you will there. Frankly, though, I just don't see the risk reward adding up for a clearly rebuilding team. As we mentioned before, I'd like a guy that is a guaranteed, I shouldn't say guaranteed, but close to a guaranteed lock as a stud player or has the post, the ceiling of being a stud player. I just don't see that out of the tight end position for a team Oh, we'll talk about here in a second, but let's go to wide receivers first. Wide receivers. And I know what everyone's thinking on this position for the Bengals. The Bengals need a player that can take the top off of a defense. They need that speed. They need that burner that was supposed to be John Ross. It just isn't turning out here for the Bengals. Do I think it'd be nice to have? Again, absolutely. Is it an added dynamic? Absolutely. Can Joe Burrow turn this team into a top five passing offense without a burner over the top? Absolutely. Two words. Again, John Ross. Two more words. Henry Ruggs. We constantly see... In the draft, a good receiver in college with burner speed get reached for in the draft because of, again, their top end speed and their top end speed alone. I'm not saying a guy like Ruggs won't be a solid wideout, but he was taken off the board before wide receivers like Jerry Judy, T. Higgins, C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson, all guys who honestly, I, you know, as a draft and now I still feel like they're the better, more well-rounded receivers. And the Bengals are again in that position where they can't afford to be taking these chances. Let's take a chance on a guy with John Ross potential, better than John Ross potential. Let's take a chance on a guy that's got that Tyreek Pill potential and hope it works out. You can't. You can't play the hope it works out, hope the burner game works out. You got to get these guys that can fill holes in this all or team. When you're a team that's bottom of the league, a couple years in a low, doing as bad as the Bengals are, you don't take chances in certain positions. You try to get guarantees at certain positions. And more importantly, again, I just don't think this is a team that needs a wide receiver with the quote unquote highest potential to be the absolute burner and absolute best receiver at his position with that speed, a Tyreek Hill type of player in essence. I mean, you got Tyler Boyd, who's an elite slot receiver. You got T Higgins, who in my opinion, is going to be an elite wide receiver in this league out wide. And this very scenario right here is what makes the Patriots the Patriots. Because they won't go out there and waste a first round pick on a burner when they have two talented receivers like that. No, they're going to go out there. They're going to find a player who's got that top, top end speed. But they're going to find him in the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round that can fit that specialty. They don't need a top end burner who can be a wide receiver. One. He don't even have to be a wide receiver too. He needs to be a guy that a defense has to respect where he can just straight line it down the field and take the top off of a defense and make them respect the deep ball. And there's plenty of guys they can find with that sort of ability for a lot cheaper than a first round pick, I think here.
And again, truthfully, this is probably what sticks out to me the most here. If the Bengals need three elite receivers to succeed in this league with Joe Burrow's quarterback, Joe Burrow ain't the answer, period. He, find another quarterback. If you need three elite wide receivers or three two elite wide receivers and an elite tight end, find me another quarterback. I don't think that's the case, though. Don't get me wrong. I think Joe Burrow can do just fine with everything he's got right now. I think he's going to be an elite quarterback in this league. But that's just my thought process there. If you need to have that many weapons around a quarterback, he's not your franchise quarterback. He's a game manager. He's a good quarterback who needs talent around him to be great. I don't think that's Joe Burrow. I think this is a guy where you need talent around him as an offensive lineman, or you need talent on that defense to put this team in position to go into a deep playoff run or to get you make playoffs in general. And again, games are won in the trenches. We've seen when those bang these Bengals were successful making playoffs year in and year out, they had those elite pass rushers. They had some solid guys over there on the offensive line. That's where games are won. Until the Bengals come across a couple of elite guys, either one on the defense or one on the defensive side, one on the offensive side of those lines. I don't think they should be worried about the wide receiver or the tight end position. They should be worried about protecting their franchise quarterback and they should be worrying about defense winning championships. That's our thoughts. Love to hear your guys. As always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.